Hi everyone. In this video, I will talk about the diode small signal and large signal models. You might ask, why do we need a model for the diode? The answer is that diode, including PN junction diode, is a nonlinear device. Any nonlinear device can be modeled as linear in a small region. To analyze diode circuits, we need to use a linear model for the diode. Your next question might be, what is a small signal and what is a large signal? When the variation of signal is very small, so that the device characteristics can be approximated as a line, it is called a small signal. In any region of this plot, if the variation of voltage or current is very small, that region can be considered as a line. Large signal is referred to situations when the variation of signal is large and we cannot approximate the whole device characteristics as linear. For example, if the voltage on this diode changes between 0.2 volts and 0.6 volts, there is no way that we can consider this part as linear. To see the effect of large signal, consider this simple circuit. The diode has the characteristics shown in this plot. Vt is a sine wave with amplitude of 5 volts. It changes between minus 5 and plus 5 volts. If we calculate the voltage across the resistor, shown as VL, point by point, we will get this shape. You can see that this shape is very different from the input signal. We cannot establish a linear relationship between the output voltage VL and the input voltage V. I mentioned that we can find the output voltage for a large signal point by point. Let's consider one of these points, for example, when the input voltage is 1.5 volts. When we consider only one point, there is no variation, so it is the DC operation of the circuit. In previous videos, I have shown methods of calculating the current and voltage in simple diode circuits. One of these methods is the graphical method. I use this method to give you an idea on how the output voltage can be calculated precisely and how time taking it is. If you haven't watched this video, I will explain the method briefly. We have the diode equation that is plotted here in orange color and we can write a KVL in this circuit. These two equations should be solved simultaneously. The diode equation is plotted in orange color and we can draw the circuit equation which is the equation of a line and is drawn as green. It is called a load line and has the slope of minus 1 divided by RL. The solution of this circuit is the intersection of these two curves which is called operating point or quiescent point and is usually shown by letter Q. We should solve these equations for each point of the input voltage. For each point we can draw a load line measure the diode current or voltage and calculate the voltage across RL. I have calculated these for VI equal to 0 volts, 1 volts, 2 volts, etc. And also for negative voltages. Then we can connect these points and find the output voltage. As you can see, for a large signal, 
the device is nonlinear and the output voltage VL is very different from the input voltage. There is no linear relationship between input and output. You can see for a large signal, the device is nonlinear and the output voltage is very different from the input voltage. There is no linear relationship between input and output. You have also noticed that this method takes time and it is not practical. We need a model for diode to simplify the calculations. Now let's see the situation with a small signal. In this circuit, the input voltage VI consists of a DC voltage shown with a battery sign and with a capital letter V and a variable voltage shown by small letter V. If we look at the signal waveform, there is an AC signal here that is a sine wave with amplitude of Vm, but it is not a pure AC signal and has a non-zero average equal to V, capital V. The input voltage VI has a DC component shown by capital V, which is the average of this signal, and an AC component Vm sine of omega t, which is the variation around the average. It is better to do separate analysis for the DC component and the AC component. You have seen the DC analysis in the previous slides of this video. We draw the load line and the operating point or solution of the circuit, DC solution of the circuit is at intersection of the load line with the diode characteristics. When we consider the AC signal, it moves the load line around the voltage V, capital V. The diode voltage and current can be found from the intersection of each load line with the diode characteristics. So its maximum is at this point when we have the maximum voltage and its minimum is here when we have the minimum voltage. The variation of the voltage and current can be measured from this graph. Please pay attention to the notations that I have used for the parameters. I have used small letter V or I and capital subscripts D for the voltage and current. These are instantaneous values, the total value of voltage or current at each moment of time. For DC values, I have used capital letters V or I and with capital subscripts D. The letter Q is to emphasize that it is the value at the quiescent point or operating point. The parameters here shown as DVD or DID means the change, usually small change in values of the diode voltage or diode current. The change can also be shown by small letters and small subscript. So small v and small subscript d means the change in the diode voltage. And small i with small subscript means the change in the diode current. They are equivalent. Using the standard notation is very important in analysis of electronic circuits and can cause big misunderstanding if the correct notation is not used. If the variation of the signal is small, this section of the diode characteristics can be approximated to a line, a line with a slope of GD. This is where the term small signal is coming from. You might ask how small the signal should be to approximate the characteristics to a line. It depends on the 
accuracy that we expect and also on the operating point. For example, if we want to approximate this part of the graph to a line, the signal should be much smaller than this because in this part is very curvy and very small part of this can be considered as a line. The slope of this line, which is the variation of current to variation of voltage, has the dimension of conductance and is called dynamic conductance. The inverse of dynamic conductance is dynamic resistance and is shown by Rd. Now let's see how we can calculate the value of dynamic conductance or dynamic resistance. This is the diode equation. I have used instantaneous values for current and voltage. The slope of line is change in y-axis divided by change in the x-axis or DID divided by DVD. This is the derivative of current versus voltage, which is nearly equal to ID at the question point divided by eta VT. You can use simple calculations, differentiate this equation, and you will have this. And this is approximately uh, equal to DC current divided by eta vt. The dynamic resistance is simply the inverse of, inverse of dynamic conductance and is equal to eta vt, which is around 26 millivolts at room temperature, divided by the diode DC current at the quiescent point. In this way, we have established a model for the diode at small signals. The diode can be represented by a resistance with a value of Rd. Remember, this is a dynamic resistance and applies only to a small signal variations. You might have noticed that dynamic resistance is current dependent. It changes by the DC current of the operating point. The concept of dynamic resistance can be applied to any region of the diode characteristics. But this equation for dynamic resistance is valid only for a diode in forward bias when the current is significantly large. The dynamic resistance of the diode in reverse bias or at forward bias when the voltage, uh, when the diode current is very small or the voltage is less than the turn on voltage is extremely large in the range of some giga ohms. It can be considered as infinity or an open circuit. In most applications, it has no effect on circuit calculations. When do, do we use small signal model? The analysis of diode circuits is very simple. And most of the time, we don't need a model for analysis. However, it is important in a few applications, mainly at high frequencies, when it is used to estimate the frequency response of the circuit. The reason that you have gone through too much trouble in watching this uh, fairly long video is that the concept of Dynamic resistance is widely used in small signal analysis of bipolar junction transistors or BJTs, which consist of two PN junctions. What about large signal? Can we devise a linear model for diode when the signal is large? The answer is yes and no. Obviously, there is no way that we can consider the whole characteristics as linear. It is an exponential function and it's far away from the characteristics of a line. However, we can split the characteristics to smaller pieces and each piece with a linear module. This is called piecewise linear model that I have introduced in a previous video. 
A two-piece model is widely used. One part is in forward bias when the current is significantly large, and another part is in reverse bias and also in forward bias when the current is very small. When the diode is larger than a certain voltage that I have shown here by VO, the diode characteristics can be approximated to a line with slope of 1 divided by RF. This line can be represented with a constant voltage of VO and a resistor with value of RF. The value of RF, the forward resistance, is the inverse of this line, which is defined as a dynamic resistance, as we saw before. When the voltage is less than VO, the characteristics can be approximated to this line, which passes through the origin, and therefore it can be represented by a resistor, R bit subscript R. This is called reverse resistance. Its value is very large. As you can see, the slope of this line is very small, and the resistance is the inverse of this slope, so it's extremely large. Usually we show as infinity, but it's in the range of some gigaohms or hundreds of megaohms, and in most cases it can be ignored. If we can consider this, uh, this as infinity. The value of the forward resistance, like dynamic resistance, is current dependent. Unlike the small signal case, we don't have a single operating point here. The current changes very largely with a large signal and goes through all values of the current. Because of that, I haven't written IDQ in like the previous example for a small signal. I have written just ID, the DC value of current. But which current? It depends on the range of the current in our applications or what is called the dynamic range. For example, here I have drawn a line that has the best fit to the diode characteristics at the current of 10 milliamps. So the dynamic range of the current is between 0 and 10 milliamps. If I change the current, the values of both RF and VO would change. For example, here, the line is tangent to the diode characteristics at a current of 3 milliamps. So the dynamic range here is between 0 and 3 milliamps. To be more precise, there is another resistance component in the diode forward resistance. It is the series resistance of the diode, shown by RS, which is the combination of semiconductor bulk resistance and contact resistance. Series resistance is usually very small, in range of a few ohms or even a fraction of an ohm, and it can be neglected most of the time when the current is not very high. However, at large currents, series resistance becomes dominant. For example, if the diode current is 1 amp, its dynamic resistance calculated from the equation is a few hundreds of ohm. And if the series resistance is 1 ohm or even a fraction of ohm, it is much larger and than dynamic resistance. And so it will be dominant. Thank you for watching.